Hello, welcome to our Play Club featuring Jitney by August Wilson. So glad to have you all with us tonight. My name is Rick Duldine. I'm the Artistic Director at ASF. Play Club is part of our ASF Insight series where we take a deep dive into all different things uh, involving theater. And for the next two months, we are focused on the work of playwrights. So it's my pleasure to welcome our panelists. Ron O.J. Parson is considered one of the preeminent interpreters of August Wilson's canon. He directs all over the country. He's the resident director at the highly respected Court Theater in Chicago. I could sit at Ron's feet and listen for hours. Uh, he also directed our, our tremendous production of Pipeline. Ron, so glad to have you here. Hey, it's great to be here, always. <laughs> Ethan Henry is an actor based in California. He was also in our production of Pipeline. There's a very good chance you have seen Ethan on television and you can certainly <laughs> catch him in the upcoming National Geographic series, Genius Aretha, starring Cynthia Arrigo, where he is playing Dr. Martin Luther King. Ethan, so glad to have you here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. This is going to be really <laughs> exciting. I can't. I can't wait to get started. Let's, let's <laughs> gentlemen, it's all on you. Why don't you? Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, Jitney? What Jitney is specifically about? Uh, you know, the most the thing about Jitney is this. You know, let's let's talk about what a Jitney is. You know, uh, so right, right. A, mm -hmm. a, a, a Jitney uh, back then in, in the Hill District was something that uh, was was the licensed taxi cab companies. Uh, didn't want to come down to the Hill District because it was presumed to be uh, an undesirable area. Dangerous. Dangerous area, <laughs> at that, right. And so pretty much there, 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 were, there, were, there were groups of men or you know, just groups of people that would get together and they would provide services to people in that area that didn't have a car to get around. So what Uber is today is what a jitney was back then, you know. Well, Uber is a little bit more sophisticated, but yeah, just a little bit, just, just a little bit, you know, just, 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 just 80 gigabyte computers and massive <laughs> technology. <Yeah>. Uh, <laughs> but, but that's, but that, but that's what a Jitney was. It provided service to people that didn't have a way to get around. One of the times when I've done Jitney, I've done it a few times. Uh, uh, I, we, we walked through uh, Pittsburgh to see what the real Jitney stations were like and things. And man, that was, it's it very, it very ghostly. It was spiritual mm -hmm. just being in, um, in that area and talking to some of the guys that were still doing that, you know, still now they got Uber and Lyft and stuff. It's probably not the same. Right, no, it's absolutely, it's, it's definitely not the same. And so, the, you, you know, you touched on a certain point about like the ghostly thing. And, and, and would, you, would you say that that's a, a strong characteristic in, in all of all of August's plays, uh, yeah, having that, that, three, that, I, I definitely see that. Oh <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's a great point. Um, you know, every you know, for me, every play I do has a spiritual aspect to it. That's how I feel. I'm a kind of a spiritual person, not necessarily a religious person, but a spiritual person that can feel the spirit in the room. And uh, and and yes, that would be definitely be the case. Um, with, with all of his plays, in particular, Gem of the Ocean, uh, mm -hmm. but Jitney as well. Uh, but yeah, that spirit, and, and what I like to say is his spirit is in the room when, you know, since he's passed on. That's, that, that's it though, that language, that music, you, ha you have to hear that, you have to find that. And you know, you know it when you hear it. I always have to go back to the beginnings of plays, playwrights, you know, their, their work. A lot of times people, well, what's your favorite play by so-and-so and so? And I always say, well, the early ones, the first or second ones. And like you, like you mentioned, Jitney, he had written and done, uh, you know, production of it. And, and, and then when he became a little bit more known, he pulled that out again and said, hey, I think I got something here. I'm gonna add something to it and become, and then it became the Jitney that we know. We know when he, when he decided to do the, um, the century cycle of the all the plays of all decades, he brought that back out and it became the play of the seventies. So what I wrote down here is is like uh, one of the one of the major themes of of, of Jitney to me is uh, is it, it talks about the occupants uh, the, the occupied with 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 the gradual gentrification of the Hill District and the economical and psychological oppression that weighs down and sometimes uh, divides uh, the black community. 
That's that's, that's sort of like what, and, and and you kind of see it. You kind of see it happen with, within the characters. And so you got the guy Turnbo, who's who's always in in somebody's business. You got Young Blood, who uh, who who really is trying to do the right thing by 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 his by his girl, but because other people are because people like Turnbo are, are looking at him. Hey, I'm the old guy. This is the young man. He you know he doesn't know what it all what it's all about. Uh, uh, you know, he, he, there he goes, starts spreading rumors and this kind of like creates that division between the two of them, you know, and, 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 uh, you know, you j jump in. <laughs> well, the thing about, the thing about it too, is his characters are always, they're so, they're so real. You can always hear somebody in your family in those yes. characters. I mean, yeah. also, I mean, the play takes place a lot of, which is still going on in, in neighborhoods and cities today, the urban renewal, you know, where they, mm -hmm. they're, they're tearing down the neighborhoods and some people are sticking it out. You know, so you, you got that. Then you have uh, Becker and his son. His son is, is going to jail for 20 years. So it's like uh, uh, the relationship between uh, Becker and Booster uh, trying to, you know, rekindle that. Now, Booster is trying to, you know, deal with, you know, being gone and his father not even, you know, coming to see him and, and things like that because of what he did. He, he committed murder. In a way, what, what's, what, what's, what's synonymous with, with, with most August Wilson plays is that there's always a character, whether it be central or not central, that, there, that there's one character in the play that feels that he has divine right, you yeah. know? And uh, I was looking for that in, in, in this play as I was reading it. And I said, well, I think that, 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 that guy is Booster. You know, I, I, in, in, in a way, because he, he didn't, he knew that had his father fought for him uh, on the trial or whatever, he knew that he was going to go to jail for rape for, 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 for any, you know, anyway, you know, and so he felt that he was well within his right to, you know, to kill this woman and say, well, if I'm going to go to jail, I'm going to go to jail for something I did, not for something I didn't do. And uh, that, in a sense, to me, represents some form of like, this is my right. Uh, and, and, and if you're going to already, if you're going to do something to me, then you're going to do it on my terms, not, 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 not on some fabrication that somebody else made about me. Yeah. Um, there's a question that came up about why did, uh, why did you think he had Becker die? Now I'll go to the Becker thing. Um, you know, dramatically for one thing, it's, 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 it's so poignant when, when it happens in the play and it, it's, it, 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 it takes you by surprise. And, you know, I always felt there's, there's something in the scene before we find out he was uh, killed. Um, he stops to talk. He stops to say something. And then he says, oh, never mind. Mm -hmm. And then he goes out. Mm -hmm. And then you never hear from him again. So you always theatrically are like, what was he getting ready to say? What was he going to say? What was, it, what was going to happen? Was, was that going to be, were they going to mend that? Was, it, was he going to, you know, say something? So I think you know, dramatic effect. I mean, granted, it is a play. Mm -hmm. And, you know, also is what I was going to say. You were going back to that, the, the character. Now, this one, again, it was written before all of the other ideologies of the, the, the century cycle and all of that was mm -hmm. happening. He was, he was just writing a play. That's why I say in the early stages, playwrights sometimes when they're hungry, they're just writing for, you know, there's no pressure, there's no commission, there's no pay. They're just writing a play about something they want to write. And I sure. think that that was that was a good thing. And I know uh, uh, people in Pittsburgh have told me, and I've I've heard uh, people talk about how when he used to write in the cafes and stuff and the little diners and stuff, he was writing. You know, he still he wrote with you know pen pen and and paper, you know. And mm -hmm. they would be like, "Hey, look at Young Blood over there. He was the Young Blood, you mm -hmm. know." And to to use that name in the play, you know, is this great? Uh, 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 I think. Um, uh, when when you're in Pittsburgh, you get more of a sense of that because you can you can hear the language, you can hear the way people talk, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, to answer that question, I mean, dramatic effect, and also, you know, it was just it was heart wrenching when it when it happens. Yeah. And that scene next next the funeral, the scene, the the scene. I mean, it's just beautiful theater. I it I is. love that scene. You know, with the you know what you can do musically with that and the mood, and not a word is said. Right. You know, I, I've done I've done the production a couple of times where people are like, you got all this time where nobody's saying anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, no, they're speaking very loud. Yes. You know, yes. <laughs> yes. And what, yes. whatever, whatever we do with lights and, and sound and this and that. And just a look when somebody looks at another person. We all know what it feels like when somebody dies that was close to you and how you feel the next day or the next month, mm -hmm. how you grieve. Everybody grieves different. 
Thank and the you. fact that his son didn't get a chance to to patch it up, you know, so mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it, it's it's a beautiful beautiful play. And it kind of it kind of it, it 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 really does kind of leave you hanging, uh, especially when Booster comes back and he says, you know, you said a lot, but I think you missed one thing. And then the and then and then uh, uh, Becker's like, well, I gotta I gotta do this, I gotta do that, and, and he and, 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 and he gets out of the room and just kind of leaves Booster standing there, and it's like you know. It, it, it almost lets you know, it, it's almost like something that is synonymous with we, we 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 feel like we have all this time in the world to to communicate to to patch things up but we really don't have that much time you know so if you're gonna if you're gonna make your peace with someone hurry up and do it because you don't know if you if, if you know if you're gonna get that opportunity to to to, to right and that 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 scene for me there's so many compelling scenes in there when the phone rings and you know you you don't know what's gonna happen then he just picks it up and says car service. It's beautiful. It's, yeah. it's, it's a beautiful moment. When we talk about August Wilson, and we, we we know that he was, you know, he was a poet. He was a great writer. He was a he was an artist, you know, and an art and, and a great artist always feels that his work is never done. But what, what what do you feel? Uh, and, and I'll share as well. Uh, what do you feel like his artistic mission is? You start, and I and I and I'll and I'll play cleanup. No, that. you start that because that's okay. a good question. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, okay. it's a lot. It's a lot. You know, I really can't. I really can't say what he what he felt his mission was. I think it was to mm -hmm. to to do good work and to to write good plays and tell stories. You mm -hmm. know, that, that's as far as I could really kind of go on there. But let me. I want to hear what you say on that. Yeah. Well, I kind of I kind of I kind of just feel like you know like through 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 his creative work that we could like could, you know could comprise a mythology of of you know that would ultimately unite us. You know. And that the, and, and that there's a collective humanity among us that you know uh, I was speaking to a friend earlier today about August Wilson who who done August Wilson and I said well what do you think separates him from from everyone else and good he question says, well, he, he he right right he says he says he says he says he says I don't think there's anything that separates him you know August Wilson is Eugene O'Neill August Wilson is Tennessee Williams oh, that's good he is, yeah. you know you know he is you know he he is America. And he and, and, and he wrote about what was going on in America at that time, just from our point of view and from our perspective. That's and, great. And 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 I think and I think that what August really wanted to see is he, what, what wanted everybody to see is that hey, I I am a man, you know, like you. I stand on two feet like you. I'm here like you. And there's a universality in all of the in all of the work that that that, that he does. Whether no 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 matter if if, if you know if. if if, if it's not Shakespeare, it it, it it can be compared to Shakespeare. You know, the the, the writing and, and 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 the way the way the way it's written and the rhythms and everything. Yes, it's it, it's very it's very very similar. But there's a universality with you know in, in how he wrote that everyone could relate to if you just give it a chance and let it land on you. Yeah. Okay. Well, no, now I agree with that. Definitely bringing us together, telling the story of our culture, and keeping it. And, and, and educating us on like the whole thing with the century cycle of being able to take a, each decade and show some aspect of who we were as a people. And I think, you know, I think that's great. Now going back to the language too, what you were saying, because he was a poet, you know, it, it's music. It's, it's, it, it's, you can hear the lyricism in the language like you do in a good Shakespeare play. Now, and I would say the same thing. You can see a bad Shakespeare play and you can see a bad August Wilson play where yeah. they don't have that language and that music and that interpretation of the of the of, of the lyricism in the in the spirit. Yeah. Uh, there's another question on there, Ethan. Yes. In both in both Jitney and Fences, the a father dies off stage at the end of the play, and his relationship with his son has been difficult. Is the father some relationship something that is dealt with in August work? That that's a good question. I have to. That's one of the first things I thought about when I read Jitney was that is a very, very, very strong parallel to fences between the father and the son, especially the long scene, yeah. especially the, the scene at the end of the first act between Booster and Becker is almost synonymous with who said I got to like you. You know, it's, yeah. al it, it's almost there, almost the it, same. That, that's true. That's true. And that's what I find sometimes, uh, you know, again, having done the plays more than once, you find different ways. And I, I've done fences where, where Troy was just this mean, nasty dad. You didn't see any kind of 
compassion or nothing in him. Mm -hmm. And I and I I learned from that, and I'm like, I don't want to do it like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, because you got, he has to have some redeeming value to me, you know. And um, but you know, as sometimes people want to, you know, and I always say it's easy to play the the angry black man. That's easy. It's so you gotta simple. find you gotta find the different levels that that you can have of why they they are the way they are and the pain and what it's causing Becker to be to 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 harbor that. Absolutely. You know? What Absolutely. does he do when he's off stage? What is he feeling off stage? You know. Yeah. And I think it, that that's important to in in that in those characters like that. It's more yeah. than what's just on the surface. You know, there's, and that's the thing about August plays too. They're so rich. There's mm. so much character in there. There you is. Know? There is. <laughs> you yeah. know, so, uh, you know, that, yeah. that's a good question. But the, the father son uh, uh, relationship is very, is very good in, in those two and specifically in those two. Absolutely. Uh, another, another thematic thing that I, that, that I kind of like brought out uh, or that, that, that I kind of was, was, was in there was that these are people that are on the struggle for success in the face of overwhelming odds. And I think that is a, that, that that's apparent when uh, young blood says the line, soon as I'm about to turn the corner, white man got to pull me up from up under the rug. And that, and it's, it's, it seems like it's, it's commonplace. That's also commonplace in August's plays as well. That people are they're on their way, and it's the same thing, you know. Becker's getting ready to go to work. He's here. We're gonna fight, 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 and all of a sudden, Becker passes away. Right, right, yeah. The pattern it's a pattern that happens in Argus's plays that is just so you know you know it's coming, but in it, but you're still surprised when it happens. You know, I I, I did a couple of interviews with people that are familiar with Argus's work. Uh, my wife Makiba is 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 also an actress, and she's done the same three plays that I did because we did them together, and. Mm -hmm. uh, she, she and I played King and Tanya in King Headley. And so I asked her, you know, the same questions that I asked, uh, you know, Ron Connor, who's a, who's done nine of the 10 plays and Courtney B. Vance. Yeah, he's done six of them with me. And done six of them with you. <laughs> right, 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 right. And, 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 I, and, and, I, and I got a chance to speak with Courtney B. Vance. And I think the common thing amongst all three of the people that I interviewed was that, you know, this is our voice, you know? Uh, that 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 this is my uncle sitting right here in the kitchen. This is my aunt, as you referred to earlier. Like you said before, it's easy to play the angry black man. It's just as easy to play the angry black woman. But he wrote characters that had heart, you know, and uh, and 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 have and have feeling and ha and have soul, and 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 all of that is exemplified in all of his in in all of his work. Yeah, I have to say now, you know, Viola Davis is a major star now. And Absolutely. That's, you know, these characters are ones that you know got her out there you know and mm -hmm. um and you, you find you know the, the talent that can come out of these characters and, and if you got a good actress playing them or actor uh playing any of the roles yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. so uh any uh are, are there are there any are there any other things that that were pointed out to you as you read jitney you you always often refer and you talk about how you you like to go back to the early plays, and when you talk about early plays, we're talking about how things were written at the way they were at the time. And then when you look at editions that are published editions that are of today, you oh, see, right. do you right. see subtle do you see subtle changes in the writing? Uh, or or, or, or 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 is it I that or or do you see that do you see that these that the, that the publishers are trying to make corrections to the language well i think sometimes it's that and we brought out one earlier mm -hmm. um I, i'll give that example but uh i i would say there were were some changes in his writing things that he was trying to do like with king headley for instance he's taking on a whole different format and style you know um mm -hmm. but there's a line we were talking earlier there's a line Turnbull is talking to Sheely in in uh, in Jitney and Turnbull Turnbull's a character. He's a really dastardly lovable guy, but he's, <laughs> he's I, was, <laughs> I say lovable if you love the, those kind of characters. I was George. about to say no, he's not lovable. <laughs> he's not lovable, lovable in the sense as a, as a as a performer seeing something right. that could be done, and he was the epitome of that guy. But there's just, just a small line. He says. Uh, He's talking to Sheely and he says, and Sheely is the, the numbers guy that comes in. He's not a jitney driver, but he uses the phone to, mm -hmm. to take his bets, you know, his, mm -hmm. his bookie stuff. Mm -hmm. So he says, uh, 
Uh, well, the boy come up, come by here a little while ago this morning. Now you can hear the rhythm in that. The boy come by here a little, a little while ago this morning. You mm -hmm. know, you you can say that a few different ways, but that's the music. That's the song that's being played. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, the oldest one can't be no more than sixteen or seventeen at the most. Come by here and ask me to carry him on a trip to the north side. Then he say he got to make a stop up on White Side Road. I carry him up there and he go into one of them house and come out of there carrying the television. Now, my script here says I carry him up there and he go into one of them houses and come on out carrying the television. Now, the line when we were doing the play with August there, the line was <clears throat> come out of uh, uh, come out of one of uh, go, go into one of them house and come out of there carrying the television. Now, that is the way that the line was said. This guy, he's, he's coming up from the South. He ain't trying to talk proper or nothing. And, and that's the way they talk. Mm -hmm. But I think in some incarnations of publishers and this and that, they look at, oh, that's a typo. Mm -hmm. No, it ain't no typo, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I get asked all the time about you know what's your what's your favorite production, mm -hmm. and I, I guess I would have to say uh, Jitney, you know, and Jitney and Ma Rainey. Those are the two because again, like I said before, those are early plays. As far as his writing, different. I mean, you know, it's, it it may be a little different uh, format or style or or, mm -hmm. or ideology. You know, like Fences, you know, they wanted to say that, oh, he couldn't write a play like that with the main character because, you know, rap on Ma Rainey was like, what's it about? Who's it about? You know, mm -hmm. well, obviously it's about Levy, you know, mm -hmm. um, the, you know, the movie kind of made it about kind of both of them because, you know, it's a movie. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's about those guys in the rehearsal room and Levy comes in there. It's a whole long time before Ma Rainey comes in. We got another question from uh, from Dave. It says, how does the ringing phone affect the pace of the play? And the one thing that I could come up with is that, you know, when that when that ring comes, it's usually coming in after somebody that spoke for a very, very long time. So it's kind of like a rest, you know, and, and, and then we back into it again. It's, it's uh, yeah, that, that, well, that that's a good point. That's a good mm -hmm. point, Dave. Um, but again, that is a rhythm. You know, the language has a rhythm and, and the phone ring, it has a rhythm mm -hmm. when you hit how you pick it up, how you answer it. All of that stuff is important. And mm -hmm. that comes that comes through in the rhythm and the music of the play. Absolutely. And it's very strategic. That's mm -hmm. why when you're directing it, when you're working on it, that's important. When that ring, if that ring doesn't come, it, it's like a, a wrong note on a, on a, on a bass line or a wrong note on the piano. Right. So right. It, it's very important. But uh, but yeah, that that that's a good that's a good point because that's part of the language of the play, you know especially like what I was referring to again at the end of the play, because the end of the play, at least, you know, the way that I, that I, way that I did it and the way I saw it, that ringing takes longer yeah. because you're, there's, everybody's deciding what do we do now? Right. What's the young man going to do? What am I going to do? You know, are we still, what are we going to do? Right. And he walks over there and he picks it up. Car uh, service. So you know, it's beautiful. So yes, it's a very important, you know, in, 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 for me, every sound element is important in a play, you mm -hmm. know, that's why the sound designer is key to what you're trying to do to tell that story. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's a big thing about that phone. Oh, so, so you speak about how you've directed this play several times. Uh, we, we have, we have some photos to show you guys. Of, 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 of productions of Jitney. Sounds great. And there's, there's a couple other pictures of, of Jitney too in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's, go to, let's go to another one. That's yeah. A.C. Smith. That's A.C. Smith and Kamal, who was young, but A.C., um, he's been in a lot of plays with me. And yeah. uh, again, he, he, he epitomizes August Wilson's language. He, yeah, he, he is, he, has, he is, he is August Wilson. <laughs> he has a mastery of, of the language for sure. Yes, he does. Yeah, and there's another. I think there's one more. Yeah, that's another one. Alan Gilmore, that's, Cedric uh, Young. Yeah, that's Alfred yeah. Wilson. Alfred Wilson play. He was playing fielding. Okay. And and, uh, and Cedric Young there. 
And you gave Fielding the right part. You gave, you gave it to the right person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and actually, Aaron, uh, Alan, I, 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 I cast against type, you know, mm -hmm. because he, he's just he's a good actor. He's so, great. You know, he's a character actor, so I wanted him to do a character and um and uh, and sell it, and uh, you know, I felt he did a good job. Yeah, I did a play with Al Alfred. He's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so we, we're getting ready to wrap it up, and very very quickly, if you can, oh, I, I'll, I'll I'll quickly talk about how how his work has impacted me. Um, and I would say when I was introduced to August, I was, I, I was in my second year of grad school. Well, I wasn't, in, I was introduced to it later, but I was maybe 31, 32. And at that time, that's where most of like August's central characters, you know, are in that, in that wheelhouse. So right. I, I had a lot of, a lot of opportunities to audition for a lot of August Wilson plays. And again, once, that once once those words really started to work me, there was that I can't think of any other play that or, or any other writer that 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 had me feel that spiritual feeling whenever I'm saying the words. I mean, like Dominique Morceau is very 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 close, uh, and and there, there are a couple of others. I mean, obviously uh, Lorraine yeah. Hansberry, you right. know. Uh, but but you know when 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 I did August, I was just like, whoa, what is this? You know, I want to feel this all the time. You know. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and it just, it just, it's, 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 it's writing like, like no other. And, you know, it's, it, as an actor, I just look at it as like the words are something that's there that, that will constantly guide you, you know, and, and, and every time I come off of stage after having done an August Wilson piece, I'm like, oh man, I could have did it this way, you know, or, you well, know, yeah, it, that's it, always going to happen. That's always yeah. going to happen. Yeah. I, I guess, I guess for me, because I come from, the black theater movement. I come back, you know, when the days of Ed Bullins and uh, and, uh, and Ron Milner and Joseph Walker, you know, River Niger and what the wine cellars buy and all the Ed, Ed, uh, Ed Bullins plays. So, you know, just coming into uh, uh, a new writer that was epitomizing my culture, you know, was, was really good. I was at, you know, uh, I, I was in in school. I was already out of school when I ex ex discovered it. And in my first production, like I told you, I met him. And then I got to do Ma Rainey's Black Bottom and I got to play Levy mm. and be in it at the same time directing. It. I mean, directing and, and, and be in it and play Levy. So, you know, that was from then on, I was I was hooked. Uh, this was this was a lot of fun. Gentlemen, thank you. This has been, this has been great for folks that are watching like you just got an example of like the energy, what it's like to be in a rehearsal room. <laughs> and guys, I got to tell you, like, I can't wait to see you both back together again. Oh. Uh, yeah, we got to do something. Joining us yeah, we'll do something. Time. Maybe it'll be Jitney. <laughs> yes. Hey, uh, it's on the list, my friend. Gentlemen, thank you so much again. Folks, have a great night. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>